Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction to the Krebs cycle, the stages of the Krebs cycle, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the Krebs cycle is the third main stage of aerobic respiration, and it takes place in the mitochondrial matrix, just like the previous reaction, which was the link reaction. So inside the solution of the mitochondria is the matrix, and this is where the Krebs cycle takes place. So this happens directly after the link reaction. In the Krebs cycle, there's a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions happening in a big cycle, and the purpose is to oxidize acetal-CoA that's produced in the Lynx reaction. So at the end of the Lynx reaction, we produced a molecule where we had an acetyl combined with a coenzyme A, and this formed acetal-coenzyme A. This then feeds into the Krebs cycle, which is basically a series of different reactions which happen one after another in a specific order, and they overall oxidize the acetal-CoA to produce new products. During the progress of the Krebs cycle, ATP molecules and reduced coenzymes like NAD and FAD are produced, and carbon dioxide is made too as a side product, and it gets released. So you can think of the Krebs cycle as this continuing step, or stages, which go round in a cycle and get repeated one after another. And during the cycle, we have the input of the products from the link reaction, and we have these intermediate molecules being made at each step of the cycle. And at each step, a certain product is made. And hopefully what you can notice is that every time the cycle goes round, these intermediates are being remade and regenerated, converted and remade again. But during this, it's the products which are important. So as the wheel turns, the link reaction feeds the wheel to keep going. And the important products are these reduced coenzymes, NAD and FAD, and the odd molecule of ATP, which will be used in a later reaction. So it's about producing these products which are useful. CO2 is a byproduct and will just be breathed off at the lungs later on. For every molecule of glucose that we started with with glycolysis, there are going to be two turns of the Krebs cycle. The reason for this, if you think back to glycolysis, was that the glucose made two molecules of pyruvate, and in the link reaction, each pyruvate made an acetal-CoA, so we have two acetal-CoA molecules. The CoA molecules go into the cycles for it to turn once, and so therefore this Krebs cycle for each glucose molecule is going to go around two times. And we'll talk about the stages of the Krebs cycle now. So the Krebs cycle can be made up of lots of different stages, but if you take them one by one and break them down, they're not so complicated. The first part of the Krebs cycle involves the acetal group being released from the acetal-CoA. So after the link reaction, our two carbon unit, acetyl, was combined with CoA to form the overall molecule acetyl-CoA. Essentially at the start of the Krebs cycle, it's just split up again to form coenzyme A and the remaining acetyl group. The two carbon acetyl group then combines with another molecule that has four carbons, and this compound is called oxaloacetate. So when you have two carbons plus four carbons, you make a six carbon compound, and this is called citrate. So imagine we have our acetyl here, which is one, two carbons. There's another molecule called oxaloacetate, which has one, two, three, four carbons. And in the first step of the Krebs cycle, these get put together and they form a six carbon molecule called citrate. Sometimes it helps to remember these in strange ways. For example, if you think of six, it sounds like sit, hence citrate. Little things like that can help you remember these things. Once we've made the citrate, it then is decarboxylated and dehydrogenated. So remember, in decarboxylation, this is when we remove a carbon. So one of these carbons is going to be taken away. So now we're left with five carbons. And in dehydrogenation, that hydrogen group is going to be lost and it's taken away by a coenzyme. So the coenzyme is going to accept that hydrogen. So in this reaction, we result in the production of a molecule of carbon dioxide from the decarboxylation, because that carbon dioxide is going to take the carbon away. We also get one molecule of reduced NAD. So when you have hydrogen removed in dehydrogenation, NAD, as the coenzyme, can take the hydrogen and carry it away. So now it's been reduced. And of course, we end up with our remaining five carbon compound. Don't worry about the name of this compound, it doesn't matter. The point is, it now only has five carbons, so we call it a carbon or 5C compound. In the next stage, the five carbon compound is again decarboxylated and dehydrogenated. So it's kind of a repeat of the last process. So in decarboxylation, 
Again, we're removing another carbon group to leave now a four carbon compound. And again, we've got dehydrogenation. So we're likely going to be making another coenzyme with an added H to it. So this reaction, just like the last one, produces one molecule of carbon dioxide, one molecule of reduced NAD, and this time a four carbon compound. So again, we've got our CO2 as a waste product. We have our NAD coenzyme, which has taken that H away from the five carbon compound. And we've now got a four carbon compound turning through the wheel. The four carbon compound then goes through a few changes. So the four carbon compound temporarily combines with coenzyme A. And at this stage, an ATP is produced from the ADP and PI that's floating around. So here's our four carbon compound and a coenzyme A molecule just comes along and binds to it. In the process of doing this, because of certain chemical rearrangements, a molecule of ADP combines with a phosphate group to form an ATP. So we just make an ATP by the rearrangement of these molecules. This kind of production of ATP in the Krebs cycle is known as substrate level phosphorylation. Sometimes you have a certain term for how ATP is made. And when ATP is made by adding a phosphate to ADP, we term this substrate level phosphorylation. So if you're ever asked during a question how ATP is made during the Krebs cycle, it's by substrate level phosphorylation. The addition of phosphate group to ADP to make ATP is always this type of reaction. The next thing to happen to that four carbon compound is that it's dehydrogenated. It's lost the coenzyme A because that was only a temporary binding. But this four carbon compound next has a hydrogen atom removed. And in the process of dehydrogenation, we make another compound. And we've been talking about how usually it's NAD that takes the hydrogen as the enzyme helps to make this. So in a dehydrogenation, the hydrogen goes and adds on to this coenzyme. But this particular step of the Krebs cycle produces a different four carbon compound. And also it reduces a different coenzyme and it's called FAD. So this time we don't have NAD, we have FAD. Don't worry too much about what these stand for, but the point is they're very similar in structure, but you just have to note that this stage uses FAD as the coenzyme, not NAD. It's just a better suited chemical. So we have now formed reduced FAD and the new four carbon compound. It still has four carbons because no carbons have been lost yet. After this, this new four carbon compound is dehydrogenated too. So we have another round of dehydrogenation again catalyzed by an enzyme, and this time the coenzyme is the usual NAD, so we form NAD that takes that hydrogen, and this is reduced NAD again. So this is our third NAD we've reduced in the Krebs cycle. This particular reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called isomerase to produce oxaloacetate and a reduced NAD. So this enzyme is isomerase, and it's called this because it's rearranging this molecule into a different form and the molecule that this makes is oxaloacetate. And you may remember that oxaloacetate was the molecule we started with when the Krebs cycle began. What this means is that the cycle can then continue again. Altogether, the Krebs cycle results in the production of three reduced NAD, two carbon dioxide molecules, one ATP, and one reduced FAD. So if we were to draw the Krebs cycle out, then this is what we would have. First of all, we have a four carbon compound, which is oxaloacetate, combining with the two carbon acetyl group, which comes from the link reaction. And this forms a six carbon compound, which is citrate. Citrate then gets decarboxylated and dehydrogenated to make a CO2 and a useful reduced NAD. After that, the same thing happens, where we produce a four carbon compound. And again, we form a molecule of CO2, which is waste and a reduced NAD. And then the four carbon compound goes through some of the changes. So first of all, it stays as a four carbon compound, but it combined with coenzyme A temporarily. And in doing so, produced a molecule of ATP. There's then another rearrangement, whereby a reduced FAD molecule is made. So a different coenzyme that time. And then the isomerase enzyme turns it back to oxaloacetate, and in doing so makes a reduced NAD. Now what happens is another acetal will come from the link reaction and this oxaloacetate has been remade so they can combine to form citrate again and it will keep going round and round and round. And the point of the Krebs cycle is to make these products. So we have three reduced NADs, one reduced FAD, an ATP and two waste CO2s. 
Again, these reduced coenzymes are going to be used later in a reaction that happens later in respiration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.